down back in Castle Stage. Yeah, the lad that does the windmills. And he's picked up an old dynamo for us. Generator. Which I'm going to be able to run off the, the steam engine once I get it back together. I think it's rated at one kilowatt, so that should be interesting. This is part of his windmill he's been building. That's his big lathe, I think it's a long lathe. And there's a Kerry lathe bullied under there somewhere. The proper Aladdin's cave as you can, you can see his windmill blade up there. Everything here runs on 24 volts, even that, even that big lathe's 24 volts. But this is quite interesting looking affair. Up the windmill now. See it's circling now looking for the wind. The tail plane pushes the blade into the wind. And it's starting to run now. That's all who I'm built. I believe he uses industrial stepper motors, big three-phase stepper motors. Probably 25, maybe 30 foot off the ground. It's moving on there and it picks the wind up and it will start to run. And so what's happening now? It's definitely away this time. It's quite big, it must be four or five foot across that blade. Each blade. So we are now very quiet in operation, you can't hear it at all. Yeah, sort of stabilised there now with a steady rev. It is moving on as the wind's gusting from different directions. I've brought the dynamo home from Castleside. It's quite a big affair. It's, I mean, I haven't got little hands. It's heavy as well. It's rated at 110 volt, 500 watt. I'll get a close-up shot of the spec plate on it. It needs a bit of work done. It needs the commutator refacing. You can hear the bearings are shot, but it's. Just the right sort of size to be driven off that little Stuart and Turner steam engine that should load it up quite nicely. I'll have to make some sort of base for it because there's no base for it, no mounting points. I'm sure I'll be able to sort something out. I've made a little adapter for the, the nose of the motor. I'm going to put a electric drill on and run it up just to see if it does put any voltage out. I might be sure me that it did work. So we'll hook some wires on and see if we can get any sort of readings out of it. Right, I've got me little meter on there, we'll run it up. Right, so that's put 97 volts out. Yeah, it obviously works. Very pleased, very happy. I'm sure I'll be able to make something out of this. It's a project in itself, just stripping this and rebuilding up the new bearings. But all the electrics check out fine, so it's, uh, it should be a good little project. Yeah, open brush gear on the end. Yeah, the carbon brushes in there. Proper springs to hold them in, so it's all old school stuff. Armature is wound with copper wire, it's actually covered in string. But I'm sure a couple of bearings in here and a bit clean up the coat of paint and it'll be good to go.
I'm not quite sure what to do with this, whether you skim it in the lathe or I'm not sure, I'll have to find out a little bit about it. But it, it's working the way it is. Wiring one's tidying up. I just want to rewiring some new some new bits of lead putting on, but basically it's all there and it works. One of the great things about plasma is it'll cut any metal as long as it's conductive plasma I'll cut it. This is 4 mil copper sheet and I need to cut some washers. Copper's a bastard in the machine it always has been but it cuts really nice with plasma. Put some fans on. That's the way they come out with a little bit of dross on the bottom and it simply pulls off like that. Nice clean copper washer and it's already been annealed. These washers are going to be used on a central steam wagon, they're super heater washers. So they need to be really soft. So I'm going to fully soften them before I push them off. So we'll heat them up to a nice cherry red. Put the light out so you can see better. A nice cherry red colour. 
And you know you can quench them in water which cleans them or you can let them cool down naturally anyway you get the same degree of softness. It's a nice pinky cherry red. These are not fitted to the engine, not tightened down, will compress and shake up any imperfections on the latent faces, that's the idea of the new and thing. When the truck is used, it gets hard, it will harden. And you've got to go with it again to soften it. Old fashioned copper head gaskets, copper offset with head gaskets, so you can soften it really near. We'll use them again. Very happy. So the pump works in both directions. Right, so I'm happy because I've got a proper mess, but I'm happy because it's, it's pumping oil. I didn't want to build the engine and then start it and think I wonder if it's got any oil going around. You can't tell by the side glass it goes on here. But let me put that on there because that's one of the bits that Bob stripped and rebuilt for us. See the oil dripping there so it's going down and feeding that gear like it's supposed to. This is absolutely superb stuff this. Once again, my workshop's turned into a little bit of a bomb site. I'm having to rearrange that cabinet there and the wheels that's going away. And I've managed to get another tool cabinet, which I'll show directly. That's a tool cabinet there, that blue one. You can see already it's suffering from flat surface syndrome. It's got things on top of it. The box is empty and I've got plenty of stuff to go in there. It'll make a big difference because I can put all this stuff in there belong to the lathe, it's all at hand and I'll use that one for the miller machine here's a really nice cabinet quality stuff, the drawers come out a, a long way massive hinges on them, massive runners and when one drawer is open you can't open another one to stop it from falling over these are some Gauge wire idlers I've been repairing. That's the original miserable roller there. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please click the button, it is quite important. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the videos.